What's up, guys? Welcome to the channel, and welcome to a, I don't know, a little special episode for uh, Meet the Maker. I wanted to show you guys what I've done with my bases so far. Um, I don't know, maybe get some feedback your on... blood spills in your outpost, Custodian. Okay. And through it, you sustain us. Okay. Uh, yeah. I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe you guys could share some insight with me. Think of, uh, some different, uh, defenses and whatnot. But anyway, let's go ahead and head over here and take a look. I've got three outposts right now. Um, they've gotten a few kills. Nine on Tybee Island, five on Parish, two on East Grand Forks from the last times I checked it. Um, but yeah, I wanted to kind of go through these in order and break down some of my thought processes for them. So anyway, let's get in here. Yeah, I made uh, made these ones, oh, I don't know, day before or something like that. And I kind of wanted to have a general theme with them. Um, Okay, so let's just walk through this like a regular person. So the uh, idea behind this base was um, I kind of wanted it to be like, I don't know, like a castle keep type of a thing where you have a big open courtyard uh, with like a tower. Um, anyway, you'll see what I did with this here. I, did, <laughs> I actually ran out of uh, like the necessary capacity in order to uh, trap stuff, so I just made the bottom here look a little... little uh, I don't know. Cool, but anyway. Uh, okay, we got our first uh, first kill here. What do we got? Bolt shot, level 72. Dang. Okay, so from there, uh, let's see, I got this guy hanging out here. Here's the uh, Forsaken Vault. Oh, by the way, PSA, if you guys are making bases in this, don't be the type of person that blocks off vaults. Like, come on. Don't, don't be that guy. <laughs> um, okay, so here's this little entrance over here. You head up pa uh, up the yellow ramp, and you're immediately greeted by a bolt. Uh, another bolt over here, and an impaler, just in case you kind of, you know, stop here and try to feel things out. Uh, I've got a few pitfalls. I like putting in pitfalls in random places. Um, they're pretty fun. So, I've got a number of those out here in the courtyard. I've got a hornet over here to just kind of hopefully serve as a distraction. Same with this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, warmonger guy. It's a warmonger. Yeah, it's a warmonger. Yeah, same with this, uh, warmonger guy. They're pretty much just distractions. Um, uh, and then maybe they could cause people to run into some of these things or the bolt traps and stuff that I have around here. But anyway, um, yeah, got some, uh, got some traps in here. Bam, bam. I'm really enjoying the corrosive cubes. But uh, anyway, let's continue on. We've also got the uh, Impaler right here, uh, along with two more Pitfall Traps to the left-hand side. There we go. Uh, lots of spikes, all that. Um, I mostly put these spikes here to hopefully act as some kind of a distraction for other traps, namely uh, this guy right here, the uh, this whole bomb thing. But uh, anyway... One thing I'd like to do, actually, potentially... Nah, I'll worry about it later. I was going to say I could put this on second wave, but that's okay. Um, then I've also got this bomb thrower here, uh, which, yeah. I kind of I want to have my traps act as either, well, a trap that'll kill you by itself or a distraction which enables opportunity for another trap. So they come through here, and uh, this thing triggers. They get the notification, and then they maybe... Uh, get hit by this thing when they turn the corner after the bombs and uh, we'll go on here got some more impalers on the uh, ceilings and whatnot there we go got two bolts bomb and of course the gin mat so yeah do -do. Now, uh, the thing that I think is the most fun about this setup, which I think it's only gotten like two kills out of like the 40 or however many kills this uh, whole place has gotten, um, it's, it's this hollow block right here. Now, if you come over here and you listen, where is it? Where is it? Yeah. Anyway, if you come over here, you can sometimes hear the, uh, the forgotten tomb down there. Um, but anyway, uh, I've got it set on second wave, so that way if they if they walk over this in the first place, they'll think it's a safe square. Um, but once uh, you grab the material, if you run in here, you'll fall into my pit <laughs> filled with uh, 
enforcers and, you know, warmongers and all that. Looks like somebody did actually fall for this. That's fun. Yeah, I, I really wanted to experiment with the idea of throwing people into a pit filled with uh, enemies. But, uh, yeah, anyway, let's get out of here. I think that was all that was really here to show. Um, the reason why I didn't continue putting things in, even though I have, you know, like an extra thousand capacity, is because um, if I put almost anything in, in addition to what I already have, it'll knock me up to uh, brutal difficulty for my uh, my base. And, uh, yeah, I don't want to do that, because uh, chances are less people will play it. So I think if you can stop upgrading your base to the point where it reaches that threshold between dangerous and brutal, that's probably your sweet spot. Uh, but I wanted to make uh, I wanted to make something just to start off here. But uh, anyway, let's go back to sanctuary and show off the uh, the next base. So that one was uh, like the theme behind that one, kind of an open courtyard type of a deal with main emphasis on you know one area for a bunch of uh, traps and stuff like that. <clears throat> there was a lot of experimenting I did in that uh, that first little bit. But uh, anyway, let's go to the next one. Perish. This is my second build that I've done, so let's jump on in here. This one's focus was probably me just experimenting with some of the new things that I've unlocked as far as traps are concerned. Um, let's go ahead and just run through here. I've got a lot of signs and stuff. Um, by the way, I always try to try to remember to signal where the actual thing is. And it's down there. Uh, it's not blocked off. You can get you can get down there, but then you also have to deal with the uh, impaler that I decided to put down here as well. So, a little cheap, but uh, you, you you can get it. You can get it if you try. <clears throat> okay, so let's continue. All right. I was really hoping like me putting down this graffiti and stuff would distract people because they might like look at it and go oh, look at the graffiti, wham, and then get killed. But uh, anyway, uh, as you can see, more arrows pointing to the left. And then pointing down, and there's the tomb. Uh, again, it's also trapped. The good part about this is, since I'm guiding people to this, right? They might come down here and break this thing, grab this thing, and get up there, and they think, oh, that's all that's over there. It's okay. Uh, but I have a bolt thrower on that side over there that uh, only shows up after you grab the material. So there's probably not much reason for people to like turn and keep going this way and then look to the right. There's not a lot of leeway for the damage you can deal, but, yeah, whatever. Anyway, let's continue. So I've got uh, more second wave bolts. I was hoping this, uh, <laughs> you know, this little graffiti would distract people. And then uh, they might activate the bomb. I don't know. It, it, it's, it, I was experimenting with a lot of stuff. There was a point where I had this block disappeared, and I had an enemy behind it. Uh, kind of like uh, this one up here. But... Uh, Anyway, what got you? Yeah, the Impaler got you. Nice. Which was this Impaler. And then you got killed by another Impaler directly here. And what about you? Bolt Shot got you. Oh, I'm so glad that Bolt Shot actually got a kill. <laughs> it's over here at the end. Um, yeah. And then, of course, uh, I've got the uh, the whole... This thing down here, the Corrosive Cube. reason for that is uh, a lot of the time uh, when people break one of those traps, they go back over there to get their bolt. So, I don't know, there's a chance maybe somebody will walk in there, is what it is. Um, I used to have a hollow block above that, but I think that changes my rating. Um, I don't know, we can try. Let's, let's just uh, put that there. You always gotta wait on the right-hand side for it to confirm. Okay, that put it up to dangerous, so let's get rid of that. I noticed there's a little bit of an issue when it comes to... Uh, how the normal, like the brutal ratings and stuff like that kind of go. Like you can take a bunch of stuff out and then put the exact same stuff in and it'll upgrade your rating. I don't know how it determines that stuff. But anyway, okay. Uh, this is the primary thing that I was experimenting with on this map, which is the uh, the Iron Claw, the uh, this guy right here, Iron Claw. All it does is just drag people. So it drags people and they come over here and maybe, hopefully, they fall in that and die. But if they don't, fall in that and die, then the impaler directly above it will kill them. <laughs> I've gotten a few kills with that. 
Um, and then there's uh, also this one as well. So nobody <laughs> nobody expects a uh, an iron claw that close, right? No. It's just designed that way, so that way, uh, you know, this impaler can take them out. This one's actually gotten a number of kills. Uh, one thing to note about the iron claw is its actual, I guess, uh, I don't know, homing ability is 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 pretty good, um, and it also homes and launches itself farther than the actual uh, the uh, like the radius for it to. Uh, Activate. So uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, uh, five. No, four. It was four, I think. Um, I'm pretty sure that it's four or five that it'll actually do the threshold for grabbing. But um, I have activated that, and I've ran like all the way back here, and it's still grabbed me. So it's got a pretty decent range once it actually activates. Um, but yeah, got another uh, hollow cube guy here. And um, one uh, one little piece of advice I would give, if you have a hollow cube like this, okay, and you've got a warmonger or whatever, if you enter your uh, if you enter your uh, record guard patrol thing and move them inside the hollow block, they'll actually be standing inside the hollow block without it activating. Um, so, yeah, you can, can you can kind of get a little little bit closer to enemies before uh, you know before they get inevitably killed. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. Oh, I've got, like, you know, little traps and impalers and stuff like that. Spent a decent amount of time throwing lights on this whole thing, too. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, that's my, uh, that's my second base. It's not too bad. I mean, I still need to get better at, uh, I don't know, the thought process, or the thought process when it comes to, uh, traps. Oh, yeah, yeah, I should probably talk about this one, too. Uh, this is just your regular bolt trap, but it's got, uh, second wave. Uh, and it's also got Hunter. So Hunter makes it so that your bolts home mildly. So, like, instead of just going straight, it might be able to go, like, to here, or to, like, here, or in some cases, up here, which I did get somebody that did that. Um, I, I think they ran like this. They saw it activate, and they tried to jump up here. But, uh, yeah, I found their body, like, right here on the edge. So it's actually got a pretty decent, um, like, curve radius for the, uh, you know, the homing ability. But, uh, anyway, let's go to my most recent base that I made. This next base, I wanted to try and experiment with some ideas that I had, some experimental things. <clears throat> so, uh, the traps for my third outpost primarily try to inconvenience people. Um, so, I mean, it, it did get nine kills. Uh, it's only had four attempts, and it's got 11 kills, so not a bad ratio. Um, anyway, let's get in here. <clears throat> oh, another PSA. If you do a map, just throw an accolade on it. Doesn't have to be anything in particular. But when you do that, it gives you extra prestige points for, you know, doing this thing where you can prestige things. You need to get points from kills or accolades and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, <clears throat> if you guys are playing this, then always make sure that you uh, give accolades. I mean, it's, it doesn't cost you anything. And, and, if you do the accolades, you will also get trophies and achievements and stuff. Because you have to rate a certain amount of them. Anyway, let's get into this. Uh, like I said, this, this build was primarily about experimenting with uh, ideas. Like, unconventional ideas. So, let's see. Oh, the Enforcer got you. Good job, Enforcer. Good job. I don't know which Enforcer got you. Probably the one on the right. Yeah, whatever. But, uh, okay. <clears throat> So, lots of pitfalls in uh, somewhat random locations. The only problem that I have with pitfalls right now is that um, uh, they don't count as walkable space for your little harvester guy. So, you, if, if you are following directly behind one, you'll never run into a pitfall trap. But, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe, maybe they'll augment a mod or something like that to change it, I don't know. But, uh, okay, here was my main thing that I wanted to test out with this one was... Uh, it was these enforcers up here, right? They just stand there, and they, they stand guard. Um, oh yeah, another fun thing you can do, if you want them to specifically target, um, like in a different area, but you want to fine-tune it, uh, all you gotta do is go to record the path, figure out where you want to go, like this, 
And if you want them to be stationary and stand right here, just hit square. Well, at the bottom left, you can see stand guard, auto complete, and complete patrol. Hit square, and then they'll just move there, and that's it. They'll just stand there like that. So, something to consider. Something to consider. So, whoa. <laughs> Fell into my own trap. Okay. And everybody else died. Uh, more towards the end. That's good. Um, I just recently made some changes <clears throat> to the end of this little uh, thing. So let's do this. Alright, so once you get past all the pitfall traps and these guys... Oh, I never even explained why I had these enforcers up here anyway. Okay, so... I've got these enforcers up here, and, and my idea was that, uh, come on, get up there. My idea was that if you shoot them with your lancer, uh, typically speaking, the enemies will um, get launched backwards with the uh, harpoon stuck in them. Uh, now, I designed these ones, so that way, if they get shot with a harpoon, their body goes flying straight in the back with a, uh, with a corrosive cube. So... The whole design... Oh, this guy actually got taken care of with that. Good. Yep, killed by a corrosive cube. So it works. It's actually the first kill I've gotten with the corrosive cubes in this little map. I think. Anybody else died of the corrosive cubes? Nope. Just that loser? Got it. <laughs> but yeah, the whole uh, point for this was um, to... Well, get rid of your ammo. So like this one, I've got a little slide-off thing. But, uh, yeah. I originally had it... Um, so that these tiles were sloped tiles to guarantee that they went backwards, but it kind of messed with the aiming on the enforcers, so, eh, whatever. So yeah, that, the whole point of these guys is just to make you waste your ammo. So that hopefully, uh, if you do do that, uh, well, you're gonna regret it. This one I put down here just as a, uh, I don't know, funsies? <laughs> okay, so, now we're on to the next part. So, I've got... Oh, the Enforcer totally killed this guy. Oh, the Bolt Shot got you! Really? Wait, which Bolt Shot got you? Oh, the one right there. Got it. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so yeah. I put this guy up as a, uh, a distraction. I was kind of hoping that they would uh, get put into an awkward position. So... Oh, I never even grabbed this one, did I? There we go. And you, of course, died from a corrosive cube. Pitfalls are fun. So, let's get back here. Uh, I've got uh, these two, like, staircase walls. And I've got them facing each other, like this. Um, the way that works is, if they come up here, I'm hoping the way it's going to work is people will go like this and fight this guy... Um, and if they kill this guy, then this thing's probably going to grab them. And if that grabs them, they're going to get stuck here. And then they're going to get hit by either this bolt thrower, this bolt thrower, or that bolt thrower. So it's kind of like, I hope it kills them. <laughs> that was my whole idea with that. Um, okay, so after that, uh, oh, I also made some of these pitfalls second wave. So that way, if you got through it the first time, you'd think, oh, that's all of them. Uh, but it's not. So those two up there, this one. And this one over here are both, or rather, all of them are uh, second wave. So maybe people will, I don't know, mess up and run into them. I think it's worked. I don't know. But uh, let's see. We got another bolt thrower here with uh, homing and second wave. This guy right here, second wave. <laughs> and did the bombs get you? The bombs did get you. Nice. And the bombs got you too. Is he the same person? They are the same person. Oh, that's rough. I don't know what that thing is on the right. Whatever. Okay, so. Thought process there. Big ramp. I, <laughs> I... I tend to do, like, these weird color schemes. Just to make people not pay attention to stuff. But anyway, you get up here. This, in, uh... This enforcer is armored, so he's up there. The whole point of him was just to make it so that if somebody came up like this and heard or saw him, they would immediately engage and, you know, shoot this guy. Uh, unbeknownst to them, there is a bomb ejector directly above them. So, it's just kind of trying to get them into the open. 
Okay, so after that, we've got a second wave bomb, because who puts two bombs next to each other? I do. <laughs> so he's doing his thing. Uh, let's see. We've got another claw. And this one is um, this one is not a second wave. It's just a standard claw. And then uh, I've got an impaler on the roof. So the thought behind that is they come up this way. Um, if they see the impaler, that's fine. Because once they walk up here, they're going to get grabbed. Uh, and then from there, they'll uh, probably die to either the spikes or the uh, the bolt thrower that I've got here. This one doesn't have homing on it because it's a relatively short distance. It's okay. Uh, and also, another fun thing I like to do is if you put a, uh, a trap down and uh, somebody shoots it with a lance round, a lot of the time people will walk up to it to get their stuff back, and that's why this impaler is here. Fun stuff. Um... Man, how did, how did this one Enforcer kill you guys so many times? <laughs> he's just, he's a distraction. He's not even meant to be a threat. <laughs> eh, whatever. It is what it is. So, that is the culmination of my outpost thus far. I'm going to be experimenting with more ideas. Um, I saw some fun ones from some people um, that I'll probably, you know, steal for my own. So, yeah. Not too bad. I think the next the next one I'm going to do, or the next concept I'm going to mess with, is just guards. So, I'm thinking I'm going to have a big open space that's relatively enclosed and just put a bunch of guards in it. See what happens. But, uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, right. So, those are all of my outposts that I have so far. Let's head back. They're all active, so you guys might be able to find them. I don't know. I think... Finding specific maps is relegated to the social rating aspect. Oh, hey, I got a trophy. Lord of the Wastes. I don't actually know what that does. Activation of outposts? I don't know. But yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Um, how much is it for the next, next uh, burial site here? Oh, and just to go over the stats one more time. 17 raid attempts on my first one, 43 kills. Parish, 17 attempts, 32 kills, and the most recent one that I created today uh, has 4 attempts and 11 raiders killed, so not terrible. Let's see, what are the next burial sites we've got? Uh, they're getting more expensive for some of them. I don't know. I don't know what size I want to go with for this. Um, what I'll probably end up doing is just picking one that doesn't have the advisors on it, so I've got traps, guards, and weaponry. So, I'll need suits and hardware. So, this one's 675. It's not too bad. It's only got 750 capacity, though. It's not great. It's not great. So I might pick something else. We can always refresh, but it does cost 75, which is kind of a decent amount. Eh, whatever is what it is. But uh, yeah, those are my uh, outposts thus far. If you guys uh, have any ideas, please let me know. I'm always interested in trying out new ideas. Um, but yeah, I will see you guys in the next episode. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this game as much as I am, because it's, uh, I don't know, there's something about it. It's just kind of fun. But uh, anyway, see you guys later. Bye.